Welcome to Printing Profits. Whether it's knowing what they want, when they want it, or the right way to sell it to them, the best businesses know that understanding how to satisfy their buyers is the key to success. But what do you do when those same buyers are unsatisfied or even downright angry, especially when an issue isn't your fault but still ends up affecting your store's reputation anyway? Welcome to Printing Profits. I'm Talish Safar. Alejandro Capilan is a musician from Mexico and opened his first store back in 2016. Since then, he's employed a team of people selling items to buyers around the world. That includes personalized products, which means dealing with buyers on a more technical level. He quickly learned that customer service plays a very important role in scaling up your store. Alejandro, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. So one of the things that really surprises me about your story is that you are a musician first and foremost, and that is what your career was before you started into POD or selling online. Uh, can you tell me through how that happened, how you went from being a, mu a musician to deciding, you know what, I'm going to open up an online business? Well, actually, I studied a little, I studied marketing, musician, oh. music was more like a hobby, right? Because I, I had the, the dream of being a rock star, as every musician <laughs> in the world. Yeah. But it didn't happen, so I had to go to, to college, and I went to, I studied marketing. And I started working in an agency, but at the same time, I was playing with my band, going to some tours, playing in some bars. You know, the, the stuff that every musician is, tries to do to, to, get, to get famous, right? Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, I was doing the, the bo both things. And of course, I, I got all my skills from the career and from the, the years I work on a digital agency. So, but yeah, I'm a musician as a hobby. So I tried to make it like a, my life career, but mm -hmm. it didn't happen. Fair Maybe enough. in some years. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully this will give you the freedom to, to, to go back and do that full time. Um, so you're a musician. Uh, you know all about the customer experience. And I'm sure that's grown, you know, since you've started an online store, how to give people the best customer service uh, possible. But I want to talk to you about the worst customer experience that you've ever had. Have you ever had uh, a bad customer experience shopping online somewhere? And, and what was it like? Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, I remember um, I'm here, I'm, I live here in Mexico City, so yeah. I remember I bought a, a, a MacBook Pro in, uh -huh. from Amazon, Amazon US, but it was, uh, I don't remember how they call it. It's like, it's not like a new one. It's some, something that was broke mm -hmm. and they have to fix it and I they see. send it to you. So I bought this this laptop, and I remember that when I, the, 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 the package arrived to my place, it was a nice looking MacBook Pro, empty. The box was empty, what? and I can feel it <laughs> since I received it. So for for me, I was like, okay, I spent a lot of money on this laptop, and I received a nice box with nothing on it. But the thing is that actually that that has a good impact on me because it was empty, but Amazon was very good at. Saying, uh, re refunding the, the money so yeah. I didn't lose any money uh, and, I, and now I have a nice empty box because I, I, don't, I didn't have to send <laughs> the box back to, to them so for me that was uh, the, the worst experience because it wasn't like it took uh, like two weeks or something but at the end I, I received my money back but it was uh, two scary weeks of me with no, with, without my money but with an empty <laughs> box I mean, I know since then, being an online seller, that you probably had to deal with, you know, nightmare customer service situations yourself. Can you tell me about a, a, a situation with your own store or your own products uh, that was a struggle for you having to deal with a customer and, and, and how you dealt with it? Well, first of all, right now we sell personalized products. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a nightmare to have a... To, to have like not non-customized products, of, of course, but now that we have customized products, we need to add more layers to this nightmare because <laughs> we have to deal with these customers that are sending us all the time messages like, oh, I made a mistake, yeah. I misspelled something. So pretty much uh, we need to 
to add some strategies, some steps before sending everything to production. Because now I know, now we know that we have to wait some hours because in in those 12 to 24 hours we, uh, after the purchase, we need to wait because sometimes the the, the our seller is gonna or buyer is gonna ask us for to to change something, right? So yeah. With the, Pretty much, if you're working with customized products, you need to have a lot of patience because you're going to have a lot of emails and messages from everyone telling you to, to, to help them to, 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 to change something. Yeah. But we are getting good at that, so it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> I was going to say, what's it like maintaining like, your, your cool, you know, to stay cool-headed when you have so many changes like that coming in? First of all, you have to hire something to help you with this because it's something that <laughs> if you are in finance and you are creating products, you cannot deal with everything. You need yeah. to hire someone. Of course, we have like uh, strategies. We have like um, Google document where we have like the most common queries. Mm -hmm. So every time uh, we uh, someone has like an issue, my team knows that they can just go and see through this document and find a solution. So that's what works for us because... We know what's the most common problem. It's, it's because sometimes it's the, like they choose something that what is wrong or they misspell something. And we know how to deal with that. We know how much time we have to make some changes. Right. And that works for us because we know what to do for almost everything. But I can tell you after several years, I can tell you there's always something new from the customer. <laughs> so we are adding more and more queries to that document. So then with your experience, you know, dealing with customers over the years, uh, for people who are going into Q4 now, which is the, the busiest time of the year, the holiday season, um, what can they do to make sure that they're offering the best customer service possible? Especially if they don't have the ability to hire people to help you like, like you did. Uh, what can they do? Um, First of all, I think everyone has to be very honest on their websites. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sell on Shopify, but I think it, it's the same on Etsy or Amazon or Shopify. You have to be honest with your your shipping times. You can you have to be honest with what they can expect mm. because this is I sell customized products, so it helps me to explain to my customers that they they are gonna it's gonna take some time to receive their products. Uh, but it's not just like saying like. This product is going to arrive at your place in seven days. Take it or leave it. You have to be more poetic. You, you can be more like, listen, this is a customized product. It's made only for you. And it's going to be with, we're going to produce it with a lot of love. But you have to wait two <laughs> to seven days. So I think it's, everything is, has to be with the, with the messages that you send them. And we usually use these messages through all the process. We have these messages in the description page. We have these messages that the, the shipping times on the card, on the emails. So we the best you can do is you don't want to deal with all these messages and queries is that you have to write it down everything on your website, on your emails, on your confirmation page, everywhere. Because we know that usually people don't really read. They just yeah. want to go to the whole process. So that you have to write it everywhere. That's uh, the best thing you, you can do if you, if you want to avoid those things. But you have to be patient because you're going to, anyway, you're going to receive a lot of messages, yeah. people asking you uh, for, your, for their product. And it's, it's normal, of course. For a lot of sellers, you know, they, they start their online business and they think, okay, I got to have those winning products. You know, I got to make sure my advertising is taken care of. But customer service for them isn't a priority. You know, it, it comes afterwards. Why do you think customer service or having good customer service is so important for a store to be able to do well online? Well, as you're, mentioned, as you're saying, you need a good product. You need a star product, of yeah. course. But at the beginning, what you really need is credibility. You don't have that asset. A lot of people spend a lot of money, of course, in product, in designs, in in everything that comes with the product. But the thing is that when your customer or the visitor is going to your website or your Etsy uh, listing, they will try to see if they can, if you are something that someone who has enough credibility, mm -hmm. if you have five-star reviews, if you are a star seller, if there are some reviews in your website, because if you don't have that, it's going to, it's going to be very difficult for them to buy you. 
to buy the, your product. So um, credibility for me is the very first asset that you have to invest. And sometimes you have to refund a lot of, of your products, of your orders. You have to give some products for free. Mm. You have to send them an extra product. Just if, if something goes wrong, you have to send them something uh, like a gift or something else, uh, another T-shirt or, or maybe a sticker, because what you really need at the beginning is five-star reviews. Those right. are the most precious things that you need because that gives you a lot of credibility. And you don't even have to uh, fight with another competitor's on price, that's the worst mistake because mm. what you really need to do is to prove that you have a honest business and then you can sell whatever you want with a correct price. Let's not say you can just uh, give expensive products because that's not a good strategy, but you have like a correct price for you and for your finance. Uh, but if you have star five star reviews, you, you have more room to do more crazy stuff to maybe increase your prices. But at the beginning, all you need is credibility. And that's um, the, the one of the assets that some entrepreneurs don't really think a lot because it's not something that comes in mind when you are trying to make profits. Right. Because yeah, if I'm telling you, you. You have to give away some things. It's like, no, no, no. I, I want to get some money. I needed the money. I need it, I need it right now. Yeah. But there, there, you, what you really need at the beginning is to prove that you have an honest business and you have credibility. So then what do you recommend people do if they're in a situation where they're having an issue with a customer, but it's not their fault? You know, maybe it's something wrong with the production, but they're taking the heat for it. Maybe they're getting a bad review. Um, I know you said, you know, you can send them products for free, but maybe what if that isn't an option? What are some other ways you can maintain a positive image for your company when you're having an issue that, that that's not your fault? We have found a lot of strategies. For example, if a customer already has something that he bought and he don't, he doesn't, or he, he or she doesn't really like the quality, maybe we can tell them, okay, we can give you uh, uh, another product, but mm. if that's not an option, at the end, you have to refund the money. Mm. But we have a, a like the middle a, a middle strategy that is between another product or a refund, and it usually works very well for us, is that we offer them a 40, sometimes a 50% discount, oh, and we tell them, okay, this is a discount, and you can buy not only the product that you bought, bought us, you can buy any product in our store, you can buy one, two, three, any product that you mm. want at 40%, 50% discounts. And with this discount, we are not going to make any profit, but we are sure that you're going to try new products, you're going to enjoy right. your products, you're going to have gifts for Christmas. And usually that works well for us because they are very happy with that solution. It's like, okay, I want to go with that because I saw in your, in your store that you have a lot more products, so I can go with that option. And it usually works well for us. And even if we sell at 40% discount, we have a little small profit, <laughs> but they don't know that. But even though uh, we're still making business and having some profits, very thin profits, but still it's something good because after that, uh, if they still use that 30 or or fifty percent discount, they're gonna s continue buying more stuff. So they're gonna become those repeat customers, yeah, in the long run. Exactly, because because they already know that if something goes wrong, they can they can just talk to us and we will find a solution for their problem. Yeah. Speaking of repeat customers, I mean, is there are there tips that you could recommend for people who? want to keep customers coming back? I mean, I know that you said, you know, you have good customer service. You can offer them a discount if something goes wrong. But uh, what about the, what if, if, what if, if things are going right and you want to have a strategy to have customers keep coming back? What, what are some strategies there? Um, I, of course, I think you have to, to think in some marketing strategies and mm -hmm. spend some money. I think the best strategy that you can use for uh, repeat uh, buyers is email marketing because mm. with uh, with email you can do a lot of things like send an email to a customer saying that oh it's been three months since your last purchase maybe you want to check what are our new products uh, and may and sometimes if we have some things that went wrong with some customers we just send them an email saying like oh we haven't heard from you are you fine with your last purchase? Uh, is there something else that we can do for you? And by the way, we have these new products that maybe you can check. 
So it's all about email. You can yeah. do retargeting on Facebook, but it's I think it's very expensive. So mm -hmm. the best solution for us is email marketing because uh, we believe that the as you mentioned, it comes Q4, right? Yeah. And we usually don't use that many advertising for that for those last two months. We use pretty much email marketing to remember that we still exist, that we have the best collection for Christmas, that we are here, that they can trust in us. So email is the best option that uh, for repeating customers. One of the things that I really like about your strategy to sell online is that you really take advantage of the print provider network. Um, in that a lot of people will choose like a single source or a single print provider, but you opt for choosing a network. Um, how does that play a role in make sure that your customers are getting the best service or the best products? Uh, I think it's, it's all about shipping times because right now, and thanks to Amazon, people want to have their products right now, right maybe now, the yeah. same day, maybe tomorrow, to, but tomorrow after tomorrow, no, no, I don't want to know anything <laughs> about that. But for us, it's like if, you, if we have a networking and we can send them a product direct from a country that is close from their place, it's going to work better and they're going to receive the product faster because that's what we're trying to, to get from the print providers. But there are some cases, and I think that's the, the beauty of Printify because you, you, we are trying to move from only T-shirts. We are trying mm -hmm. to uh, add some new products to our, our catalog because... Selling clothes, it's very hard because people will tell you, oh, I'm a medium size, but it, in reality, they're another size that they don't even know and they don't <laughs> even care about the, the size chart. Yeah. But what we, that's why we are trying to sell some other things that are more friendly, like mugs or, I sure. don't know, like posters. They, they know what they're going to receive. And if this, the mug is larger or smaller, they, they won't care, right? So, Fair enough. But what I, I think that's the, 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 the best thing that, we, that working with a lot of print providers because you have not only like, a, the, you, you can not only check for different qualities, but you have like a, and like a big, big catalog of different products that you can sell. I see. And yeah. we are always looking for something new because, because of our niche, because we sell uh, customized products for music lovers. Mm -hmm. We always looking to find an, a new way to, to, to add more products that maybe are not best sellers because that's something cool that you have your, your best seller catalog, which yeah. is uh, always good to have. But sometimes we want to go crazy and find something different from your from the bestseller catalog because sometimes it makes sense for us to sell those things because it kind of makes sense because of our niche, right? Yeah. So that, that's the best thing to have a, this big catalog of print providers. You mentioned that you sell personalized products and um, that that does well, even though uh, you have to get more technically involved with a customer at that point. Um, what advice would you give someone who's considering selling personalized products but they haven't started yet? What, what are some things that they need to keep in mind? Um, my, my advice: Don't do it. No, of course, <laughs> do it. But you have to, you have to keep in mind that um, you have to deal with the API of Printify. Mm -hmm. That's maybe that's a barrier, but it, you, it's not that hard. I mean, I just took like a four hours tutorial on, on some code language on YouTube, yeah. and for me that was enough to to connect with the API. Every time I have an issue, I just go to Fiverr and hire a, a programmer, and they help me to fix it. It's not that hard. It's actually very easy for me, but um, you have to, to think of what are your, you have to know what your customers are asking you, because mm. I started selling non-customizable products. I was selling just regular line products with a regular design, a static design, let's call it. But then my customers start to asking me like, oh, can I add this QR code? Mm -hmm. Or can I add my name? Can I add the name of the my favorite song? They, they start to, to say things that make sense for me. So I was like, okay, how can I do this? There are some good... Um, apps in Shopify and where they can help you to, to do this without touching any code. But I think if you really want to, to do it the right thing and you, have, and you want to have the uh, control of what you are letting your customers to customize, you really need to, to, to go to the API. But my best advice is just to start doing it, 
look look for uh, some tutorials on YouTube. Uh, I think you guys have some tutorials on how to use your your API. Definitely, or if yeah. If not, I, I'm pretty. Yeah, and if not, even the the website is very clear and it's very easy to understand how to go to from point A A to point B. But even if you cannot do it, it's very right now. It's very cheap to hire a a, a, pro, a programmer on Fiverr. Maybe you have to pay like. $15 and you can have a, a nice tool that you can use it to earn a lot of profit. So yeah. it's totally worth it to, to just go for it and don't feel fear of oh, see all this code because it's not that hard. It's very easy, actually. The other thing, if you're listening right now, folks, we'd recommend is Hello Custom. They're a new tool that we're partnering with that uh, makes all that a lot easier. So try to check that out if that's what you're interested in. One of the things that I love about the way that you deal with customers is that reassuring them, you know, reassuring them that, that your that your shop has a personality. You're communicating with them, even though the things that you said right now about you know reaching out with a free Spotify playlist, it does a lot. These small things to develop like your brand identity that you want to be trustworthy to your customers. Um, so I guess my last question for you before I let you go here is how important is developing that positive brand identity uh, to growing your business or to scaling your business to the next level? It That's very important. I mean, this is what I'm talking about credibility because, um, for example, let me give you an example because mm. they, they, they have to know that you are a brand. They have to know your name through all the process because when they see your emails, maybe three months or maybe for after one year, they have to know who are you. They mm -hmm. have to know that you are trusty, right? And the, uh, something that is very funny for me is that we we usually we 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 do sometimes retargeting for our, our customers on Facebook ads, and that's funny because for me it's like magic when they see our our ads on Facebook, and without. We asking them, they go, they comment the ad, and they mm. take a picture of their product, usually wow. their T-shirt. Like, oh, this is my T-shirt. This is a honest company, and I'm planning to buy more products. Yeah. We don't have any strategy to, to do that. It's, they are no bots. They are real person, and they do it because they watch again our, our ads. Even maybe it's a different ad, because, but they notice or the name of our company, or they notice or, or very own tone because we have like a very specific tone of what we talk about yeah. our customers because we we like to make them feel like rock stars we are always talking about <laughs> them as rock stars because it makes sense because we are all musicians pretty much so it makes sense to 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 build a brand because at the end they will they will remember you they will remind you that you are trusty and they, and you are a honest business and they can buy again for you so and become your own brand ambassador people, support you you know even when you don't want exactly to, yeah. I, and some people believe that that's hard with a print on demand business or drop shipping i i have always believed that this is not drop shipping because i'm not selling someone else's product i'm selling my very own products right. yeah. which another company helps me to to produce right but those are my products those are my designs so it's not drop shipping it's print on demand right mm -hmm. well i mean just listening to the amount of care that you're telling me about your strategy makes me want to check out your store because i totally believe you uh, just from hearing from you that uh, <laughs> there is a good person behind this so thank you so much for chatting with us today alejandro thank you it was an honor i'm very happy to be here and it was very fun to have this chat with you this is printing profits Hey folks, thanks again for listening to Printing Profits. We'd like to thank Alejandro for chatting with us today and at the same time introduce you to the talented team behind this program. Executive producer, Laura Gelvite, associate producers, Anita and Joki and Amalia Schwarzkopfa, technical and video production, Emil Yasuns and Valerius Olechno, sound production, Christos Hartmanis, and I'm Talish Suffer. See you next time.